I hope you're well. I hope your studying is going great. Let's go over a few Newton's questions. I'm just jumping right into past paper questions because that's pretty much the best way to study at this point. So we've got a wooden cabinet of 60 kilograms resting on the back of a tip-up truck. And it says that the back tilts slowly and makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. The cabinet does not move. So first of all, this piece of information is vital. This piece of information telling me that the cabinet is stationary, it's not moving. This basically tells me that it's a Newton's first law question. Remember, we always need to identify whether we're doing Newton's 1 or Newton's 2. If the object is not moving, 100% Newton's 1. They want the magnitude of the frictional force. Now, remember what I told you guys. Before you even attempt a question, you need to make sure that you have a free body diagram. They didn't ask me for one. I don't care. You need to draw one. So let's draw one. So my cabinet is a dot, as you know. And guys, I always tell you, this thing is on a slope, like this. So, what do I tell you? I tell you to draw the slope in with pencil. You can erase the pencil. For me, this makes a massive difference. I can see what I'm doing with regards to getting my angles correct. So, forces acting on the cabinet. Force of gravity pointing straight down. I'm sorry, I'm writing on a writing tablet, so these aren't going to be the straightest lines. Make sure yours are dead straight. The normal force, because the object is on a surface, acts at 90 degrees to the surface. Make sure or imagine in your head that there's a 90 degree angle over here. Try and get it as perfect as possible. Then, there's no applied force acting on this cabinet. No one's pulling it, no one's pushing it. However, we do know that there will be friction. If this cabinet were to move, it would move down, most likely. Well, actually kind of obviously because there's the slope is tilted. So that means friction is going like this. And because the cabinet's not moving, it's actually static friction. But we can just leave it as F. I mean, if you want to put FS, that's fine. Right, now, remember, if they asked you to draw a free body diagram for marks, you would leave it like this. Okay, cool, we can erase our slope lines. Like this. There we go. Done, done, done. Leave it like that. Don't break up anything into components. However, if they don't ask it for marks and you want to scribble on it and do one as a rough and you need to break up forces into components, you can do that. So basically, draw a free body diagram for yourself that you can make notes on and scribble on. When we break up weight into components, we need to remember the following. It'll be FG perpendicular, FG parallel. FG perpendicular is always in line with the normal force. So. I know it's tempting to maybe want to break up FG over here, but that doesn't make any sense. FG perpendicular needs to be in line with FN, like this. Okay, that is FG perpendicular. FG parallel is going like this. FG parallel. This is a 90 degree triangle. That's 30 degrees here. That's 30 degrees of the slope. That is 30 degrees over here. Right, I hope I haven't lost you yet. Remember, you never break up a force into components on the free body diagram that you do for marks. You do this on your own free body diagram that you do on the side. Okay, now calculate the magnitude of the frictional force. So guys, they told me the cabinet doesn't move. I concluded that it's Newton's first law. That means F net equals MA. Remember, you always start with F net equals MA for Newtons. However, if the cabinet doesn't move, it has no acceleration. That means that mass times acceleration is zero. So F net is zero. Because they asked me for the frictional force, and I know that the frictional force is over here, I need to consider the forces in parallel to the slope. In other words, the ones acting like this, which would be friction and which would be FG parallel. Not normal force. Normal force is perpendicular to the slope. Not FG perpendicular because that's perpendicular to the slope. So, F net parallel is equal to zero. We always start with a vector addition of forces. So we've got Fg parallel plus the frictional force, and that must equal zero because the cabinet's not moving. Right, now, how do I actually figure out my frictional force? Well, I can easily work out Fg parallel. How do I do that? Well, we know that Fg is mass times gravity. We know the mass is 60. We know gravitational acceleration is 9.8. So if G
d, this magnitude of this vector over here is 60 multiplied by 9.8. I'm looking for fg parallel, which is opposite my angle, so I use sine. So basically, fg parallel is 60 times 9.8 sine 30. Why 30? Because the angle is 30. Okay. Sorry, my 60 is disappearing. It's supposed to be there. Now, please, never ever forget, and this is absolutely essential in physics, you guys know this, is when you do calculations like this, you need to choose a positive direction. I haven't done so yet. I also haven't made any signs of your negative. Because remember, when you add the forces initially, it needs to be a vector addition. Always. So you always start with pluses. When you substitute in values, that's when you put signs in. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say down the slope is positive. You could have totally chosen up the slope is positive. I'm going to choose down the slope is positive. Therefore, up the slope would be negative, right? So, I'm going to substitute some values in. Fg parallel, we worked out, is this over here. Fg parallel is going down the slope. Think about the weight of this box. It's pulling it down the slope. So, this is going to be positive. 60 times 9.8 times sine 30. Then, I do not know what the frictional force is. I'm not sure yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, I'm not subbing in anything, so I'm leaving it as a positive. The reason I leave it as a positive is because I know that it's going up the slope, so it should be negative, but I'm not substituting a value in, so I need to leave it. This answer should come out as a negative. Then, if you work this out, and you do so correctly, you should get fs equals negative 294. That negative just means that it's going up the slope. And it is. Force of friction is going up the slope. We got a negative answer, which makes sense because friction is going in the negative direction. But remember, we don't leave our answer as a negative. We change it to a positive and we say Newton's and we say parallel up the slope. Parallel up the slope. If they ask for the magnitude, you do not need to give me a direction. They ask me for magnitude. I, I just thought I would include it here in case they just say calculate the frictional force. Then you need to include a direction because friction is a vector. Right. I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to the next one. Right. Next question. Calculate the coefficient of static friction. Now guys, some people forget what the coefficient of static friction is. That is not friction. Coefficient is this thing. That funny symbol. Mu s. Coefficient of static friction. It has no unit. This is dependent on the two surfaces that are in contact with one another. It will be different for every two surfaces that come into contact. So a book and a table will have a different coefficient of static friction than a book and a piece of paper, for example. So how do I calculate the coefficient of static friction? Well, I use this formula. F s max equals coefficient of static friction multiplied by n. Now what the heck is n? n is your normal force. But I don't give you the normal force. I never once in the question said the normal force is x, y, z. You need to calculate the normal force. How do I do that? Well, you go to for a bo free body diagram. And this is why I tell you, you need to draw this. I don't care if they don't ask for it, you need to draw this. So here's normal force. Look where it is. It is going perpendicular to the slope. So if I want to find normal force, I need to consider all the forces acting perpendicularly to the slope, which is Fn and Fg perpendicular. What do I know about the forces acting perpendicular to the slope? Well, guys, is the cabinet moving perpendicularly to the slope? Is it flying up into the sky? No. Is it sinking down into the base of the truck? No, it's not moving in the perpendicular direction. So that means that F net perpendicular is equal to zero. What are my forces in my perpendicular direction? The two yellow ones, like I said. So we've got Fn plus Fg perpendicular, and they should equal zero because again, truck, the box, sorry, is not moving in the perpendicular direction. How do I work this out? Well, I'm looking for Fn. Let's say that I chose up perpendicular to the slope is positive. That means down perpendicular, perpendicular to the slope would be negative. So Fg perpendicular would be negative. 
So Fn is what I'm looking for. Fg perpendicular is going to be a negative. But negative what? What's the value? Well, remember, I can use trig to find it. So Fg itself is 60 times 9.8. 60 times 9.8, that's this one over here. If I'm looking for Fg perpendicular, here's my angle. Fg perpendicular is adjacent okay, to my angle. And what do we know about adjacent? It's trig, so it's cos. So it's going to be 60 times 9.8 cos 30 equals 0. Again, this is negative because it's going in my negative direction. Okay, if you work that out, you take that over, you should get Fn as a positive, which makes sense. It's about 509,22, blah, blah, blah. Remember, don't round off yet. We're not at the end of the question. So my best advice is basically Fn is equal to, you take this term over, it becomes 60 times 9.8 times cos 30. It becomes positive. You can leave it like that. Newtons. Sub that in there. So we've got Fs max equals coefficients of friction times n. I'm going to, I'm looking for the coefficients of friction. My normal force is this. Yes, you can write 509,22, but then please don't round off. Write it to at least five decimal places. I'm just going to write it as this term because I don't want to round off. And then what is Fs max? What is my, my static friction? It's this number over here. It's that number over here. So 294. How do I get this variable by itself? I say 294 divided by this. And you will get 0, 0,58. Remember, this thing does not have a unit. It's just a coefficient of static friction. And that's that. hope that is helpful, guys.